2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to give you a little thought here and let you go this evening. It won't be long. Just a minute here. 2 Peter chapter 1. And I just want to uh, preach to you just, just very shortly this evening. Think something, a little truth everybody should know, but there's probably those here tonight who need to get this, get this settled real good. I want to preach on uh, some ways to miss heaven. There's some sure ways that you're going to miss going to heaven when you die. And here they are. In 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse number 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. The Lord says here that we are to make sure. If there's one thing you be sure about more than you know you have a job tomorrow, you need to be sure that you're going to heaven when you leave this world. More than you know that you have your house payment ready this month. You should be more sure that you're going to heaven when you die. More sure than you got your your driver's license current and up to date. You should be sure that your name is in God's book and you'll go to heaven if you died. I don't want my girls tonight, when I die, to have to walk around and look at my casket and say, I wonder where my daddy's at. I, I never heard him say for sure that he knew he was going to heaven. I want to know I'm going to heaven and I want them to know when I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing in the world tonight is knowing where you're going when you leave here. When you leave here. I preached a whole sermon this morning about being a winner. And I talked about the people that had all this money bet on the ball game this evening. And I talked about all the human sex trafficking that's going on this evening. During the Super Bowl, they said it's the highest time of year for selling underage kids to perverts. All over that place. Right now, while we're, we're sitting here tonight. And how wicked this world is. And how bad it is. And it's all wonderful and celebrated and great in the world's eyes. Listen, there ain't no hope for this world. This world ain't getting better. The Lord said it was going to get worse and worse. He said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. While they're deceiving people, the devil's deceiving them. So long story short this evening, there ain't nothing in the world more important or better than knowing where you're going. Teenagers, y'all know where you're going when you die? Mamas and daddies, not grandpa, mama, papa, do you know where you're going when you die? I want to tell you how you can know that you're going to miss heaven. First of all, if you think just because you're a church member uh, that you're going to heaven, trusting in your church membership. You wouldn't think I'd have to say that here in a Bible-believing church, but there are people all over Burke County who think, I, I, I had some men before, I said, are you a Christian? He said, I'm a Methodist. Of course I am. Uh, that's, that's like saying, are, are you married? And him saying, yeah, I'm a Methodist. That's a ridiculous answer. It's got nothing to do with it. Uh, being a Methodist don't make you a Christian. Going to church does not make you a Christian. I know people who say, I've been to church all my life, therefore, I'm automatically going to heaven when I die. Wrong. Wrong. Judas was right with Jesus everywhere he went. Judas Iscariot was beside the Lord Jesus Christ in every great service they had while he was here. He did not go to heaven. I'm telling you, you can go to church. To, uh, I mean, you, you can belong to every church in Burke County and die without God and go to hell. As the old preacher said, you can be baptized so many times. Tadpoles know your social security number by heart and die and do, without God and miss heaven when you die. I mean, going to church don't make you a Christian. I mean, sitting in a garage don't make you a car. Sitting in a, a bakery don't make you a donut. You look like one, but it don't make you one. I'm going to tell you this evening, going to church does not make you a Christian. You're not going to heaven because you go to church. We go to church because we're Christian. I don't go to hell. I'm not a Christian because I go to church. I go to church because I'm a Christian. I don't go to church trying to get saved. I go to church because I am saved. I want to tell you this evening, uh, a church membership will cause you to miss heaven. How many people in here this evening is a member of a local church somewhere? Would you raise your hand, please? If you're not, you should be somewhere in this world. That's about everybody in here. You're, you're, you're a fool tonight to trust that membership to take you to heaven. 
If I had to die tonight, I, being a member of Shining Light Baptist Church wouldn't cross my mind. It wouldn't. It would not cross my mind. If a man said, Danny Castle, I'm going to shoot you and you're going to die tonight, I wouldn't say, boy, I'm glad I joined that church that morning. It wouldn't even cross my mind. My mind would go back to that night as an 18-year-old kid when I fell on my face before Jesus Christ. I repented of my sin and he saved me and wrote my name in the book. That's what I'm counting on. Amen. Uh, church membership. Well, not, uh, listen, some of the crookedest people to all them uh, was belong to a church. Hitler was a Catholic. I mean, all them people. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a Baptist. I mean, listen, Bill Clinton was a Baptist. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, being going to church does not make a Christian. Well, let me say the next thing. Uh, I'll tell you another way to miss heaven. These are going to be very quick, so listen. Trust in doing the best you can ain't going to get you to heaven. It's not going to get you to heaven. You, you, can, you can sincerely be doing the best you can and be doing something completely wrong. Did you hear about that guy that had two Super Bowl tickets and he couldn't find them and his dog ate them? Dog, really, it was on the news. His dog ate two, he paid like $2,000 for them. Uh, and the dog, I don't know about you, but that dog would be in dog hell uh, if I paid $2,000 for a ticket and a dog ate. But he said that, that dog ate his Super Bowl tickets. And I don't know if that's, um, I don't guess it's non-refundable, non-redeemable. You wouldn't want them after you got them back, that's for sure. Uh, but listen, brother, uh, listen, uh, that dog thought, well, I'm doing a good thing. I'm cleaning up around the house. Uh, but let people's like that. They think, well, I'm going to church. I do the best I can. I've talked to people right here in this town. And I said, are you going to heaven when you die? And their answer is, I'm doing the best I can. I hope I am. Well, I hope to. I, I'll say, how's things between you and the Lord? And they'll say, well, pretty good, I guess. And what they mean is, I'm not, you know, I ain't killing nobody or just living in open, some wicked, vile, ungodly sin. But listen, folks, that's not got anything to do with it. Not anything to do with it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The best we can possibly do falls short. I don't care how good you do. I don't care how live, right you live. I don't care how. The best you can do is going to fall short. The best man that ever lived on this earth, not counting Jesus, will fall short. Give me down just high, brother. Uh, will fall short when it comes to going to heaven. You know what a lot of people think? A lot of people think, and you teenagers might have this confusion in your mind. They think when you die, God's going to put all the good stuff you did on one side and all the bad stuff you did on the other side and well, you know, whichever way, that'd be which way you're gonna go. Well, you better hope it ain't like that. I'm glad it's not. I mean, you know what it'd be? It'd be going boom like that right there. Your bad is gonna outweigh your good. Your bad will outweigh your good, and mine would too. But I tell you tonight, thank God, it's not going to be that way. He's going to put you on there with the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord's going to tilt the scale, and you'll be saved by trusting in Him. I'm not trusting in my church membership. I'm not trusting in doing the best I can. I ought to belong to church, and I ought to do the best I can. But I'm not trusting either one of them to get me to heaven. Number three, uh, trusting in some kind of civic club or organization. You would be shocked tonight to know the men, especially in this country, who believe because they're a member of the moose or the goose or the elks or the frogs or turtles or, or the, the lodge. I, I had an uncle, bless his heart, and, every, I, they, and my aunt and uncle lived in California. And every time I talked to him, I'd say, y'all going to the church? And my aunt would say, well, he's going to the lodge. He goes to the lodge. And he goes to the lodge on, on Tuesday nights. And he goes to the lodge on Thursday nights. And he goes to the lodge. And I said, why don't y'all go to church? And they said, oh, Danny, the lodge does a lot of good things. And the lodge, uh, the, the Shriners, they have all these burned children and they, they give them money and they do I said that's fine that's wonderful that's great I ain't against that but I'm going to tell you something Jesus did not die for a lodge Jesus did not pay a price for the lodge Jesus died for the church and any lodge or organization or club of do-gooders where these, all these men think, well, I'm in the Kiwanis and I'm with a, this club and I'm with a, uh, this club. I'm, I'm not saying all of them are bad. I'm just saying they are a substitute for men doing good works to try to think, have a good, clear conscience in the community. You can do more good in a Bible-believing church for God than you'll ever do in one of them clubs out there. You know why? They might, they might feed people, and that's good. They might help people that's hurt. 
And that's good. It might be a hospital. That's wonderful. But listen, they ain't help nobody after they're dead. We are in the business of helping people after they leave this world. And that's a million times greater. I told a man the other day. I told a man the other day. He said, I want to I wanna get involved in some mission work. He said, uh, uh, he wanted to know what our church uh, was doing in mission work. Somebody said, we're going to Mexico and build a church or something like that, you know. Then this one, I said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There, and I will say this, and I, if ever church in Burke County was here tonight, I'd say, there is not a greater mission outreach in this county to this area than our bus ministry sitting out here tonight. There is no, you tell me what it is. You tell me one home mission in this county that face to face, door to door, contact, talks to more people and tries to get more people to come to church than our bus ministry. There isn't, there isn't one. Thank God we have got the, the, the church has got more going on and the church has got, you want to do something good? You want to make a good donation? Put it in your church, brother. Get some souls saved. See some bus kids come to Jesus. There ain't nothing you can do more greater than that. Amen. People's always talking about this organization and that organization. First of all, you ain't got no business belonging to an organization that tells you you've got to keep secrets. I'm referring to the Masonic Lodge, in case you're deaf. I'm telling you, listen, uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, I know they do a lot of good. I ain't saying they didn't. I'm just saying a Christian has no business belonging to stuff there you have to keep secrets. And the problem with most Mason, Masons is they don't even know what the Masonic Lodge is, the higher ups. Where Alistair Crowley was one, you know. And uh, the, the biggest Satanist the world's ever seen just about. And, and all the other, Bishop Pike and all them people like that. I'm going to tell you something tonight. It is an organization that the higher you get, the wickeder it gets. You'd be better off just to put your money and your tithe and your effort and your prayers into a Bible-believing church. And I don't mean that bad. I'm not trying to be ugly. I've lost people over that. People's got mad and walked out of church when I say something like that. But you check it out by the Bible. Jesus. Jesus said, in secret have I done nothing. We don't hold secrets. We don't have secrets. We don't have secret organizations. And secretly, what we do, it's out in the light and we don't care who knows it. We don't care who knows what we believe and what we stand for. The Bible said if a man come, don't come to the light, he, his deeds are evil. What's that? These are evil. So if you belong to the Sonic Lodge, my advice to you is quit. Just get out of it and put all your efforts in. I don't even know if we have anybody here. I know there's tons of men that do, and they're after businessmen. They're after businessmen that make money. That's who they're after. And they want they target people like that. And anybody who's in the stand in the community and try to get them in. And they say, well, the first thing is we believe in God. And you cannot even pray in the name of Jesus. Any organization where you can't pray in the name of Jesus is a demonic organization. Muslims pray to God. Buddhists, Buddhists pray to God. But it's the wrong God. The way, you organize, the way you identify faith is you go to God through Jesus Christ and no other way. And if a person won't accept Jesus Christ, they don't accept God. Lord, I didn't mean I'd get off on all that tonight. I know churches that split over that. I know preachers have been run out of town over that. I know preachers have lost their congregation over that, lost their salary over what I just said here tonight. But uh, you say, well, ain't you scared of it? No, I sure ain't because it's right and God knows it's right and I know it's right. And if you got a brain, you know it's right. You say, well, my papa, well, my Bible. Amen. You say, my papa's a good man. My Bible's a better man. Amen. And we're going to stick with what? The saith the Lord. This is what we call inflammatory speech. Uh, that people, they say, say uh, why don't you just leave off stuff like that, brother? I have people tell me, they say, Brother Danny, your ministry, you could be, if you would just, could, you, you. and I'd say, listen, I'd rather stay a little than leave off. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I'd rather, I'd rather stay where I am now and be able to say what's right. The bigger a preacher gets, the more he has to compromise. Can't say this, you can't say that, you can't say that. That's why them politicians can't. The politicians can't get on there and say what they really believe. If they said what was really right, they wouldn't stand dogs, James. But they'll beat around the bush and dodge the issue and try to make everybody think, well, I, I'm, I believe like you, and 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 I believe like you. They're like that, like that fellow up there that... Uh, 
Well, I have politicians come on one time and they, they ask him, they said, Now, sir, where do you stand on the... Somewhere down there in Florida and they had a bunch of squirrels coming in. They were passing logs, killing squirrels and squirrels. He, he said, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to November 3rd on the election day. And in regards to the passing of the recent ratification of Squirrel Law 324789-C, I have discovered after much research that half of my friends are in favor of the Squirrel Law and will support its ratification on November the 3rd. However, on the other hand, after much consideration and examining all the facts in the office at this time and all the data and heart searching and, and conferring with my family and my constituents, I have found that the other half of my friends are opposed to the squirrel law and will not support its ratification on November the 3rd. And I, after much heart searching and examining all the facts available to my office at this time, have decided that I will stand with my friend. <laughs> That's a political speech. That's, you know what he said? He didn't say nothing. He talked, they talked 10 minutes. You ever listen to that? And you say, they almost say something. Here it comes. No, they didn't. And you, and you think they're going to say it, and then they don't. Man, them guys slicker and they've got the, like Charles Worley said, they've been in and out of the hole so many times it's slick, they can't stay in or out. I mean, they're slicker, brother, than a baby's foot. Hey, hey man, I'm telling you something, brother. Listen, I, them guys are slick talkers. I, I, I can't stand somebody talks out of both sides of the mouth and when they get there, you don't know what they said. I'm telling you, brother, it ought to be gun barrel straight, uh, heaven sweet, and hell hot, and there's only one way to heaven. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's just the way it is, brother. You'll never get to heaven trusting in a civic club. Amen? Uh, that's right. Jesus never died for the lodge. He died for the church. Amen? Let me say quickly, right quick. You'll never get to heaven trusting the Ten Commandments. One, two reasons. One is God didn't say if you kept the Ten Commandments that you'd go to heaven. And two, you ain't kept them no way. There ain't nobody in here that's kept all the Ten Commandments your whole life. You say, well, I have, Brother Danny. I'm living by the Ten Commandments. Well, I don't know if you are or not. Uh, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie in your life? Oh, come on, come on. I've heard people say, I've never told a lie. You, you lied right then when you said that. I mean, you mean to tell me that you ain't been at work and you're sitting around talking, acting, cutting up and everything, and somebody said, here comes the boss, and then you started working. That's a lie, you know. You know that's a lie, don't you? You're trying to get them to think you're working when you really haven't been. You ain't kept no Ten Commandments. You, <laughs> you say, thou shalt have no other gods before me. There ain't never been a time when you loved something more than you did God. Come on. Give me a break, brother. I, 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 you know, listen, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, I've never done that, preacher. Jesus said all you have to do is lust after the opposite sex and you've committed adultery in your heart. Come on. Uh, who are you trying to kid? We not kept the Ten Commandments. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm not going to heaven because I'm keeping, keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm going to heaven because I'm trusting in the only person that ever did. I'll hurry. By the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Amen. You say, I've never killed nobody. The Lord said, if you have hate in your heart for another person, that makes you a murderer. You ever hated anybody? I have. As far as I know, I don't hate nobody right now. But I have. Man, this guy done me wrong one time and I dreamed. I dreamed that I had him down choking him. And it felt so good. I was killing this guy. I, I mean, I, I thought, Lord, to God, I'm going to kill him. Uh, and, and I woke up and thought, oh, my goodness, that's awful. I had murder in my heart. That, that makes you a murderer in your heart. Well, you ever prayed for your husband to die? Ladies. <laughs> Trusting in the Ten Commandments. Not only that. The most dangerous thing you can trust in to keep him going to heaven is in the latter day. So many people say, I'm going to get saved, but not today. I'm going to, but not today. That's the most dangerous, dangerous way to look at things. 
See, because the devil don't care how much you believe. As long as you don't do nothing bad today. I put you on a scale before. Everybody here, get ready. I'm putting you on the scale. Don't get excited, not that kind. You say, Brother Danny, I started my diet January 1st. Here it is, February, and I've gained five pounds. I know, I've done been here and stuff like that. But I ain't going to put you on that kind of scale. I'm going to put you on another kind. It's a time scale. Let's suppose that your life began at 7 o'clock this morning. You will die at 11 o'clock tonight. That, your lifespan, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the morning, break, 11, 12, lunch, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, supper, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, watch the news, whatever, kick back, eat a snack, die at 11 o'clock. That's your life. On that scale, are you listening? On that scale, you got up at 7 this morning, you will die at 11 tonight. On that scale, if you're 15 years old, it's 10.25 a.m. Already time for a break. If you're 20, it's 11.34. If you're 25, it's 18 minutes to 1 in the afternoon. Everybody listen. If you're 25 years old, and people say, oh, that's just young. It's already almost 1 o'clock in the evening for you, buddy. And you're going to die at 11 o'clock tonight. 25. If you're 30, it's nine minutes till two. If you're 35, halfway, it's three o'clock in the evening. If you're 35, it's three o'clock in the evening. You done lived all day. And everybody in here knows, if you start out on a long day's work, you're going to get everything you've got done by three o'clock in the evening most of the time. Some of you people, it's 35, you're done, you've done had it. It's about over for you. I mean, you fool around and fool around and don't do nothing for God. If you're 40, it's eight minutes after four in the evening. If you're 45, it's 16 minutes after five. If you're 50, it's 625, supper time in your life. You've about had it. If you're 55, it's 734. If you're 60, it's 18 minutes till 9. If you're 65, it's 9 minutes till 10. And if you're 70, your time's up. And if you're over 70, you're living on borrowed time right now. And the biggest mistake you'll ever make in your life is saying, I'll do it on a later day. A later day. I read about this man, and I'll close with this tonight. His name was Howard Cato. He lives out in the Midwest way back years ago. By 12 years old, he was drinking and running the road. His daddy was an alcoholic, and he lived a week, got into terrible sin when he was in his teenage life. And his mom was a good, dedicated Christian. And she prayed and read the Bible all the time. And he, he ran off and got out, went out and sinned. And she said, son, she said, every night at 8 o'clock, I will be down on my knees praying for you. She said, God is not going to let you just run forever. And that boy went wild. And he said one night he was out in a big drunken brawl somewhere. He got into like the mafia and all kind of stuff like a wicked, wicked, unbelievable, immoral lifestyle, drinking, carousing around. And he said one night he got out in a bar somewhere like that and he pulled a gun on a man, put the, going to kill a man, and pulled a trigger. And for some reason the gun jammed, didn't go off, and something knocked the gun out of his hand. And he got scared and he just looked up the clock and it was 8 o'clock. And he said like a dart, it hit him, Mama's praying. And he went home got to thinking about it. He said, I could be on my way to prison for murder right now. Mama's praying. And he, he kept on getting drunk, kept on living wicked, kept on living wicked, and kept on living wicked. And then he lost his health and he went to the doctor and the doctor said, you got six months to live. You've killed yourself. And he went home and he drug himself in, found his mom. And he said, Mom, I've ruined it. He said, is there any hope for me? 
And mama said, hon, let's get down here and get saved. He said, I've lived too wicked. God's not going to forgive me. Long story short, and that was in March the 14th, 1914. And him and his mama got down and that boy got saved. And his life changed immediately. And he began to go around and preach. And he turned his, his, his money making skills into a good Christian business and started making money and wound up giving 75% of his income to churches and helped the great evangelist Gypsy Smith uh, when he was at his meetings all over the country. Gypsy Smith, one of the great evangelists of the early 1900s. And he gave money to him and then he himself became a preacher and preached on the radio up in Cincinnati, one of the greatest gospel preachers in the country at that time. And it all went back to a mother who prayed and would not give up praying for her son. And I'm going to tell you ladies, this thing works, it works, it works. Don't you let the devil tell you it don't. And I'm going to tell you, friend, if you're here, I don't care if you've been the meanest crook in Burke County. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, and what happened in your life. The Lord will save you tonight. And the biggest thing you can do is put it off. The worst thing you can do, the biggest mistake you can make is put it off. Let's stand by our head for prayer. It's how to miss heaven. You know how you miss heaven? You miss heaven by putting it off what you ought to do today. Every head bowed, every eye closed, here on this old cloudy, foggy, February Sunday evening, it might be the greatest night of somebody's life. This could be the greatest night of your life. You want to be saved? If you want to be saved, you can be saved right here tonight. Right here tonight, God will save you. If you'll walk down here and get down on your knees, get in this altar, God will save you tonight. This could make the difference between heaven forever and ever and ever and hell forever and ever and ever. May God help you do the right thing. Come on, Father, I pray in Jesus' name right now. Lord, that your spirit would come upon this place. You know the need of every heart. I pray that you'd meet that need. I pray in Jesus' name that every Christian here tonight, we realize where we're at on that time scale I gave a while ago. And God help us to redeem the time and make our lives count for Jesus Christ. Have your way in our hearts. We love you. Help us to be a blessing to somebody along the way. Save that one which is lost right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing tonight. If you need to come. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. The Lord won't save you now. Come on, friend. Come on. Come on. For you Would you come? Would you come right me. now? Right now. Would you come right now? Come on. Come on right now. See on the portals he's waiting. And he's waiting. He's waiting for you. Watching for you. And for me, he's waiting for you tonight. He's waiting for you tonight. Come on, come, come on, home. come on, come on. The Lord will save you tonight. Come on, let it. come on. Sing now. You are weary. Come home. You come, you come right now. Come on. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. I always sing. We'll sing one more verse. Come on. Come on right now. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for He's pleading me. for you tonight. He's pleading for you tonight. Come on. Come on right now. Why should we He's pleading for you. And heed not his mercies. Mercies for you and for me. That's everybody. Everybody. Come home. Say now. Come home. You are weary. You are weary. Come home. Amen. Earnestly. Tenderly, Jesus 
cross is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. There's been a many, many, many services like this that, you know, it, uh, a lot of folks, we have a lot of folks gone. Jason and Crystal and them's gone on vacation. I forgot to mention them, Miss Linda with them, their whole family, uh, the, all the Kirks and all that, and plus the, the backsliders that are not here. Um, don't seem like a very special service but this could be the night when God saves somebody's soul y'all know me I hardly ever do this hardly ever once ever 200 services but I want us to sing one more verse I'd hate to get a phone call I would hate to get a phone call tomorrow and so and so died so and so died. They was there Sunday night, Brother Danny. That's happened before. We had a boy one time come to church, and he did come to the altar. He came over here on this side, and on Tuesday, I believe, I got a phone call. He died and went to heaven. He just made it in by two days. Two days. I'd sure hate to get the phone call. He said, So and so didn't make it. I want us Christians to pray, and I want us to sing one more verse. No one comes, this will be it. But I feel in my heart, there may be somebody that needs to step out and move right now. Would you come? This is the most important thing you'll ever do. Make it right tonight. Don't be ashamed. Don't be too proud, too stubborn. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Please, I beg you, come to the Lord right now. He'll save you. Let's sing. Come on, come on, right now. Come on, right now. Come on. Oh. For the wonderful love He has promised, promise for you and for me. Come on, come on, come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Come on. No, we have sinned. He has mercy and pardon. Amen. Pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. Come home. Hey, this girl. Somebody wants to see you. Hey, man, come on. Tell it tonight. Tell it tonight. Come on, man. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Hey, man. Calling, oh, sinner. Come all right, all right. We'll see another one. We'll see another one since he's come. Softly and come on, come on, daddy. Come on, mama. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come for you and for me. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. See on the portals he's waiting and watching. Watching for you. Watching for you and for me. Everybody. Everybody sing now. Come Come home. Come on home tonight. Come home. Amen. Amen. You are weary. Come home. Tenderly, Jesus is calling. Amen. Calling, oh sinner, come home. She's still praying. Tonight they're still praying. They're play- she's playing softly. Amen. This is like the first time she's ever been to church. Was this this morning? First time she's ever been here. Y'all pray for her. The Lord will help her to get things right. Sixteen years old. Isn't that a blessing? Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe there's somebody else. Maybe there's somebody else. I'm telling you, you want to be a winner in life? Jesus said, God said, uh, He causeth us to triumph. And the Lord said, Thanks be to God that gives us the victory. You're a winner either way. I talked about that this morning about sports and how, you know, nobody wants to lose. I hate to lose. I'm sure you do too. I don't want to lose at the big game, the big life, the big one. This is important. And I know I'm a winner, not because I'm any good, but because the Lord's good, and He won the victory for me. So I'm on the winning side. Amen. I hope you don't leave here tonight. Don't leave here tonight. Grab a hold of my arm back there. 
tells them, let's go in here and we'll settle this thing between you and God. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Teenager, don't think just because you're young, you can just put it off forever. You may be just sort of hiding in the crowd, making everybody think you're all right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Amen. You see these? We got all kinds of these in the bookstore. All kinds of them. That's a sharp bumper sticker. I'm telling you, that's a sharp bumper. Get some of these. Be a witness. You might as well. You ain't got but one life. We're going to be dead soon. Might as well be a witness. I get comments about my bumper stickers all the time. I, you'd be surprised. I pull in stores and somebody say, where did you get that? I gave a lot of them away. I said, I'll give this to you if you'll put it on your car. Did up here at Walmart one day. Um, a lady pulled in. She's up north and she said, I love your sticker. And I said, well, you can have it, sister, if you'll put it on your car. And she promised me she would. Right on the side of it. So get your bumper sticker. Get some of that stuff in the bookstore. Take advantage of it. Uh, God will bless you for it. And then... Uh, Shauna said she'll be right back here. Get, make sure you get signed up for the Sweetheart Banquet tonight. And uh, the Lord will bless you for that. Uh, uh, and, and the Lord will bless you, okay? So just keep praying. Be here Wednesday night. Bring somebody with you. Uh, bring your Bible. Bring the whole family. We've been having some really, really good Wednesday night services. And uh, you don't want to miss that, okay? Amen. Amen. Lady got, girl got saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. I just met her this morning. Stand up here, Amber. Amen. Amen. God bless. What's your last name? Davis. Amen. This is Amber Davis, and she's and Rat brought her with her this morning. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. She asked the Lord to save her tonight. Amen. All the way to church this morning. She had them things stuck in her, her ears. You could hear music playing. And uh, and she got some different music playing now, ain't she? What a blessing. Amen. Y'all pray for Amber. Isn't that a blessing? Glory to God. Amen. Woo! How's that? Amen. Amen. How's that for winning the victory tonight? Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad you came? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what to say, Lord. You're so good to us. All right. Amen. Well, amen. Let's thank the Lord for what He done. It's been a good day. A lot better than we deserve. Let's thank the Lord for what He's done. Everybody, fellowship, be friendly for you. Get out of here. Let's bow our heads whenever we're. I'm going to ask Brother Kirk fight, and if he'll dismiss us, and everybody, fellowship before you go.